Welcome back to Jazzy's Corner Stories. I'm Jazzy, and I'll be reading you stories as you go about your merry day. So grab that drink, find your comfort, or embrace the hustle of the day, and enjoy the stories I have for you. Today we have a post from Am I the A? And it goes, Am I the A for not letting my mother-in-law and my father-in-law help me with the baby after their reaction to me being injured? Now this is an updated story, so stay tuned. I, 21 female, have a seven month old son with my boyfriend. My family lives abroad and they are coming over to stay and help at Christmas time. For now, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, 60s Debra and Bob, are helping me with the household stuff and the baby. So far, we haven't had any real issues and they've been a massive help. About three weeks ago, I fell along the stairs. I wasn't holding the baby and the baby was safe. However, instead of helping me, Deborah and Bob both jumped to comfort the baby who was crying and left me at the bottom of the stairs. My legs were fine, but I was wobbly because of shock and I asked them for help. After nearly 10 whole minutes of being ignored, I managed to stand up on my own and hobbled through to the living room. I sat down and Deborah says, What happened to you? Are you okay? I'll admit, I saw red. I just said, I fell along the stairs. Didn't you hear me calling for you? Deborah's eyes went wide and she said she was too busy fussing over the baby. After an hour, my arm was swelling up and I was taken to the hospital. Luckily, it was nothing serious and I recovered within good time. After my boyfriend got home and his parents left, I told him I no longer want their help after today's events. I can manage on my own, even though it'll be hard. He was taken aback and said they've done a lot for us. I said I appreciated it. But they ignored me crying and calling them for 10 minutes after I fell down the stairs. They don't care about me, only the baby, and I was embarrassed I didn't see it sooner. He called his parents to let them know we won't need their help anymore. And his dad said, is it about today? We really didn't hear her. My boyfriend just told them that they're invited to Sunday roast this week and that's all. I could tell he was not happy about my decision, but he said he went along with it because I'm the mother. Fast forward to Sunday and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law are guests as well. Sister-in-law has a three-year-old and is totally on my side, but brother-in-law is not. He told me to be grateful for his parents' support as they are significantly more well-off than my parents and they have paid for many of my newborn and infant expenses and plan to pay for many more as the baby grows. Since then, Deborah keeps calling and asking if we need any help and says she feels awful for not helping before and for not seeing the both of us, meaning me and the baby, and that she misses the baby so much. So tell me, am I the A for not wanting them to help me? Edit. Was the baby crying loudly enough that there is a possibility they didn't hear me? (laughs) No way. The baby stopped crying after 10 seconds and the stairs are like 2 meters from the living room. There is absolutely zero way they couldn't have heard me from there. For one, I screamed as I fell. Two, the general noise of someone falling, including books falling and plates breaking. And And three, me crying and shouting for help. I fell at the top of the stairs and I fell all the way down. This wasn't a misstep and a bum shuffle down that hurt my pelvic bone. I fully fell down the stairs and cracked the banister. No way they didn't hear. The baby also started crying after the initial smack, after I hit the ground. So here's my opinion. I have a lot of thoughts about this, but the one most prominent in my mind is that the grandparents are only focused on the child. They really don't care about the daughter-in-law. I don't know, it's just the feeling I got. Like they were seriously pretending they didn't hear her crying? Or is it that they weren't pretending, they just didn't care? I don't know. But um, OP had responded to some comments and here, here are her comments. And from OP's comments, it seems as if the grandparents have a habit of ignoring her, whether she asks for their help outright 
or if she just mentioned something, they seem to have a tendency to go over her head or just ignore what she has to say. Now, we have an update from some weeks later. A few weeks more went by of selective visits from my in-laws. I read a lot of comments speculating on why they didn't hear me or check on me. I needed my space, regardless of the reason. They didn't seem like responsible babysitters. I want to make it clear that I never intended to go no contact or low contact. I just didn't feel comfortable with them helping out. That seemed to be the point of contention in my original. They became increasingly more worried about the baby and I turned to my sister-in-law, Fiona, for advice as I felt she was the only one who understood me. She told me that when her daughter was an infant, the in-laws were pretty hands-on too, but only with the baby. It was like she wasn't there. She told me a story where she straight up went and stood in the garden for 30 minutes and they didn't notice she had gone. They were only there for the baby. She said that we were luckier because they paid for some of the postpartum stuff for me, but for Fiona, it was just stuff for the baby, which was accepted and she was grateful, but she was completely ignored by them. She said by her daughter's she said by her daughter's third birthday, they started to taper off, mainly because my son was born. She is still mostly ignored by them though. Things started to click. It became clear that they just wanted the baby to fuss over and the mother doesn't really matter to them. It didn't truly explain the logistics of their reaction to, their reaction to my accident, but a lot of things have made sense. I told my boyfriend and we had a big discussion about boundaries. Fiona also asked to come along for moral support and to speak her piece. My boyfriend always had a hard time saying no to people and keeping boundaries, but we've agreed to fully commit. We invited the in-laws over to discuss some stuff. I told them that I felt confused and upset by their reaction. I explained that Fiona had told me and how it's not okay for them to ignore the mothers and they shouldn't do it to my other brother-in-law's girlfriend if they decide to have kids. Fiona also said her piece and stuck up for me when my mother-in-law and father-in-law tried to interrupt or twist the truth. Mother-in-law was clearly very uncomfortable and kept trying to interject with her side whilst we were talking but she eventually listened to us. She told us her side, apparently she was neglected by father-in-law's side of the family and, and that they hated her for being poor. Father-in-law is old money, mother-in-law grew up in a pit village. She also said she grew up with five younger brothers and took care of them all and never learned how to communicate with other women as she never got a good education or had friends because she was a caretaker. Obviously, I was extremely sympathetic to all of this. My boyfriend had briefly mentioned that mother-in-law was abused by her own parents but never went into detail. I then asked them both about the stair incident. Mother-in-law said she didn't care about it in the moment and assumed I'd be fine because if I was crying, I was alive. I was taken aback by her response. It honestly took everything in me not to storm off. My boyfriend told her that that was a callous answer and not all problems, specifically medical problems, are immediately present and how I still had to go to the hospital after due to an injury. Father-in-law stopped him and said they thought the baby had fell out of the crib or had fallen over, which is why they went to him after he started crying. I said I understood that, but it would take maybe 10 seconds to check and see he was okay. What were they doing for the other 10 minutes? Unfortunately, we didn't really get anywhere regarding the stairs incident. They both believe they didn't do much wrong, as most mothers don't have support systems like us. I, I told them that I'm not comfortable with them taking care of the baby if they can't understand why what they did was upsetting and wrong. On the positive side, I guess I now understand mother-in-law's intentions more. It explains a lot about her character. We're not going no contact or low contact at all, and they can still come over for visits. But, but I told my boyfriend he also needs to be there, as they seem to listen to him more than me. So that's the update. Thank you for reading and thank you all for your comments. And here are some comments from the post. 
first comment. I get the impression that it would take a ton of therapy to get them, especially the mother-in-law, to the point where they could even understand the logic behind doing it that way. Another commenter said, that's because it sounds like they only had sons and see no value in their daughter-in-laws other than to bear their grandchildren. These are people who would absolutely sue for grandparents' rights if they were denied access to their grandchild. And with that, I honestly do think that might be a possibility if they were barred from seeing their grandchild, and especially since they come from money. It seems as if girls don't hold a lot of value in the family other than being caretakers or being mother. Boys or men seem to hold a higher value to them. And it's quite sad. And it is it is quite sad. I don't know what else to say. I really do hope that OP's boyfriend protects her better from his family. And Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to connect with each other in the comments below. Until next time, be kind, be curious and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, Jazzy signing off.